My name is Daryl Carl. Thanks for joining us once again. The Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture is hinting of new reforms to tackle the menace of premix fuel diversion once and for all. This was revealed by the Sector Minister Elizabeth Na Afolikwe at the inauguration of a board for the Fisheries Commission. There is more in the following report. The inauguration of the eight-member committee comes at a time when the Fisheries Ministry is confronted by grave challenges. Top on the agenda is the issue of diversion of premix fuel by some marketing companies. Speaking to Joy Business, the Minister of Fisheries and Aquaculture revealed that a board will be tasked to set up a special monitoring task force across all districts to monitor the sale and distribution of premix fuel. We have uh, set up certain reforms uh, led by the uh, His Excellency, the Vice President, uh, and the Economic Management Team. We are putting, you know, certain reforms in place. Uh, one of such reforms is the formation of the Regional Premix Monitoring Body, uh, headed by the Regional Ministers, uh, to do the monitoring of the Premix. Also, we are auditing uh, all the landing beaches where we find. Um, not enough fishing activity taking place. We closed down the landing sites. Elizabeth Nafolekwe stated that the depleting fish stock in the country calls for the exploration of other avenues for fish production. According to her, Ghana has already exhausted the limit for fish production, hence the need to focus more on aquaculture. So it is not just the dwindling stocks, but also the increase in population. Yes, so we have to meet the demands of the population and that's why we have to uh, do a lot more aquaculture. Um, with regards to the dwindling stocks, um, we may not be able to um, improve the stocks now, but if we put in management practices that will help to rejuvenate the stocks, then in the very near future we may have uh, some species that are uh, lost at the moment uh, showing up again. The eight-member committee will have a four-year tenure renewable in every two years. Mining firms in the country are being accused of sidestepping the institution mandated to determine purity of gold exported as actual level proceeds. The vice president disclosed this at the IMF meeting on the extractive sector in Accra. It is simply not accepted that for a very long time an institution of state with the powers to help properly, in pro to help in properly accounting for our mineral resources was not enabled nor allowed to perform its job. This has to change. Thankfully, we have now begun conversations about the process of making sure every single bar of gold leaving our shores is properly weighed, tested, valued, and accounted for. While the process may not be as robust as we want, it is a positive step in the right direction. We are interested in the collaboration between the Ghana Chamber of Mines and the precious minerals marketing company in making sure we expedite the full spectrum of accounting for our own resources. Uh, a, a few months ago, I sent a team to the bauxite mine and I wanted, we wanted to find out what was going on there because for five years, um, even though government had shared this enterprise, we have received no dividends. So we wanted to find out what was going on. Are they mining or what is going on? But actually, they've been vigorously mining for five years <laughs> and declared no profit because they're claiming they made no profit. And I, I'm trying to see how the theory of the fair <laughs> would predict whether they would survive or not. Uh, five years of mining without profit. Uh, but they are vigorously mining. Um, uh, and, and we just don't see how that's going to be. Uh, another issue that I want you to consider is the nature of contract in mining this oil. You know, in oil, for example, if you have a hundred barrels of oil, we know what our share is as a government. Um, in the mining side, however, uh, we have to wait till we are told that they made profit or they've not made profit and whether we are getting any share. There seems to be a, a major uh, difference here. We have to, to look at how um, the contract uh, is done in, in these two areas. 
Meanwhile, the Ghana Chamber of Mines has been reacting to these concerns raised by the Vice President, Suleiman Kony, as Chief Executive of the Chamber. And we, we have been engaging. I, uh, we actually had a good fortune to be interacting with the current management team not too long ago. And we were commended as a chamber for collaborating and, and cooperating. So it's a bit surprising when, when statements are made to the fact that um, PMMC, for example, for a very long time was prevented from doing its work, uh, i.e. by saying, you know, go, for gold before it's actually exported out of this country. Um, and truth be told, it was only late 2016 when we actually received a letter from the then Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Neil Samuels, stating that PMMC had been appointed as a national assayer for gold, including production from the what last... What does that mean, the national assayer? What it means is that PMMC will now have to assay a gold produced in this country prior to shipment. Mm -hmm. It was only, I think, around October 2016. Mm -hmm. That was the first time we got a letter in the history of this country. Mm -hmm. And we started working with them. So, as I said, we have done a pilot because the first time they are supposed to do this and we need to make sure that we go through the process, they understand the protocols, the security arrangements and all of that. So we are in the process. We've done a pilot. We are running we are a pilot of four, country, uh, four companies and then as we speak, we have decided that we will now roll it out to cover the, the whole of the gold mining companies within the ambit of the chamber. So it's something we are working with for about two, weeks, two months, and then after that we'll sit down and reassess, you know, progress made, and fashion out how we can continue working together. So I don't know what to say about this, but it's a bit, it's a bit you know, Recently, unnerving. There was a report again in the media, and then when I even engaged some of the regulators, they confirmed about the fact that in terms of reconciling the exports, what they got from outside was way, way different from what was exported out of the country. Well, it's, it's difficult to respond to this directly because, you see, the mining industry in Ghana itself has a formal segment and quote-unquote informal segment. And we, the, mining, the Chamber of Mines member companies, actually represents the formal segment. When it comes to the informal segment, for example, when we talk about even small-scale mining, the reports on small-scale mining is not production, it's actually procurement. So even when you look at our official statistics, even from the get-go, there are challenges. Mm -hmm. So you can't put production, I always say, you can't put production, which is reported by running companies, and even purchases together. You can't. Mm -hmm. you well, away from that, prices of some local textiles and fabrics could shoot up in the coming months. Textile companies are trying to pass the huge cost in care in importing cotton for production on consumers. Sheila Tamaklo explores some of these issues in this next report. The challenge in the cotton industry for many has gone from bad to worse. Farmers have blamed the dwindling production on poor pricing, inadequate subsidy on inputs, among other issues. According to one of the major textile manufacturers, GTP, only 30% of their raw material needs is met locally. This has led to heavy reliance on imported grey baft and cotton to support its operations. A development which a marketing manager of the company says is not sustainable. If we source locally, the lead times are shorter. And so because of that, we are able to save on capital. When lead times are shorter, you don't need to hold huge stocks at any given point in time. But because we have to import, uh, uh, import from outside, at any point in time, you have to you know, import a lot more and hold stocks for a long period of time. And the more stocks you hold, you are locking up your capital. Number two, when you import the cost of freight, the cost of, you know, clearing and, and other taxes that you pay, um, you don't do so when it comes to importing or buying from the local source or supplier. So again, um, it's, it's beneficial to us, so we gain if we, if we source locally. Okay. Um, I think these are the two major advantages we get. So at the end of the day, it costs us more if we import our grey buff. Is yes. this importation of cotton by any chance affecting the prices of these fabrics? Yes, yes it does. It does. Mm -hmm. As I said, if, of course, you input your, your cost of production and then before you come up with your selling price. So it does. For some industry players, the development, if not handled, could cripple the entire industry, leaving us with a situation where most of our fabrics are imported. However, the Agri Ministry is optimistic that the situation will soon change as the ministry is bringing on some Chinese investors 
to cultivate 2,000 hectares of cotton this year. Well, I'll speak of uh, textiles, modest fa fashion business is gradually gaining momentum around the world, driven mainly by social media and other non-traditional channels of marketing. Modest fashion has often been associated with Islamic traditions. It is, however, fast catching up among the secular community as well. Now, with that kind of fashion now making its way into mainstream fashion business, our reporter, Fozia to Adam, explores the booming business in Ghana and has come through with this report. Modest fashion involves dressing stylishly to cover almost the entire body. Until recently, fashion has been quite conservative and been at odds with what's considered cool in the Western world. However, another trend which involves covering almost every part of the body is increasingly becoming more appealing, especially to young adults. The loose robe-like dress is synonymous with traditional Muslim communities and worn by Muslim women. It's also been adopted by women of different faiths and cultures for various reasons. Top luxurious brands such as D&J, Nike, local designers are fashion and coming out with new market designs, with modest fashion gradually making its way into the mainstream fashion industry. According to reports, modest fashion purchases by Muslim women were estimated at $44 billion dollars. In 2016, co-owner of Reagan Closet, an online marketplace for modest clothing for women, Ghania to Salau, says the market for apparel presents much growth opportunity here in Ghana. There are more modest brands coming up now. So you should so it should tell you that there, there's a future for modest West in Ghana. That should tell you that people are actually beginning to appreciate modesty. So it's there's a future. But at the moment, the fashion industry doesn't really okay should I say before there was not enough room for modest ways but at the moment you see aside young or young entrepreneurs you realize that even the top-notch entrepreneurs or top-notch fashion entrepreneurs are actually beginning to design more modest ways so you realize that there's a future for modest ways. Social media has played a significant role in bringing women together and running an online shop. But how much of an investment goes into advertising Modest West online in this country? It's costly. Actually. It's very costly. It's costly. And it's, we have to write to the police, so it's, it's costly. You have to pay photography, makeup artists, your model, your stylist. It's, Okay, so are you the exclusive owner or there's no, something? No, we are co owners okay. and it's a partnership, it's a partnership. The first thing is, yeah, it's co-owned by my sister and I, that's Rafia Tussala, but Reagan's has going to be a partnership. So we have your partners with Bond Photography, that's our photographers, we are partners with our stylist Undercover, and we are partners with Rhymes Effects. And we also partner with partner with our models as well. So everything except I think aside that too, more entrepreneurial seminars should yes should be held. It could be an NGO, it could be the government, it could be any organizations. I think when you have more seminars, you are able to inspire the young ones who do not have to sit down and wait for white collar jobs. Okay. So if there are more entrepre so entrepreneurial seminars, if there are more talks on how to be an entrepreneur, how to start up yourself, I think people would actually be interested in the going into entrepreneurship than sitting at home and doing that. Talking of that, um, Joy, um, Joy Business is yes. um, having this master class. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, somewhere next week, Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. Um, we are bringing the master class to the ground for entrepreneurs okay. like you. Okay. So that you get to interact one on one okay. with um, people. Yes. And yes. I think that's I our think, way of helping. I think it's, it's a good idea. Yeah. If our way of assuming that other uh, media houses or other organizations are doing what you're doing, trust me, there will be no unemployment in Ghana. For now, the second lady Samira Baumier's fashion style could be seen to be promoting modest fashion amongst women in Ghana. Fazia to Adam for Joy Business. Well, you heard Fazia talk about the Masterclass On Ground event. It is happening tomorrow, Wednesday, at the Best Western Premier Hotel at 9 a.m. Moving on to latest developments uh, to do with the LPG recirculation model. An LPG Marketers Association is allaying fears the withdrawal of their subsidiary association, the LPG operators from the committee set up for the smooth implementation of the recirculation model will affect the successful rollout of the model. 
Karen Dodu has been following up on the situation and has more in this report. The LPG Operators Association, a subsidiary of the LPG Marketers Association on Monday, decided to withdraw from a government's committee set up to oversee the implementation of the new cylinder recirculation model. There are concerns being that they were being sidelined by the committee. However, spokesperson for the LPG Marketers Association, Bernard Oredo Donko, says the withdrawal of the Operators Association will not affect the implementation process for the recirculation model. Well, I doubt if it's going to affect the workings of the committee because the committee is made up of members of the MPA, representation from the Energy Ministry, we have the EPA, we have the Fire Service, we have our association members, that's the LPG Marketing Companies Association, we have people from the Standards Authority. I mean, I don't think the pulling out by just one entity is going to store the work of the Implementation Committee because you would realize that Maybe not all their members are even on the subcommittees. So if, for instance, um, uh, the members they have there are on committee, commit, subcommittee A and not on subcommittee B, definitely it's not going to affect the work of subcommittee B. And I, 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 I don't think it's going to even bring any chaos. I don't think it's going to affect LPG uh, 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 supply in Ghana. He added that the Marketers Association will continue to dialogue with the LPG operators until they reach a compromise. We will talk to them as, let me put it in quotes, their elder brothers, because we are the association that they came out from, and it is through our services that they, they have the association. So what we have resolved to do as members of the LPG marketing company is to talk to them, meet again with them, let's see their grievances and see how best we could resolve this because we have initially i mean taken a position which we have shifted from so we don't want to go back and probably what will Ghanaians be thinking of us meanwhile the recirculation model is expected to be rolled out later this year as the first phase of the licensing process goes on Turning to other news tonight, businesses will soon be able to register and acquire licenses online as the Ghana Tourism Authority automates its operation. That's according to the executive director uh, who has been speaking to Love FM's uh, Chrissy Debra. He filed this report. The authority intends to automate its registration and licensing procedures to ease the process of procuring licenses to operate tourism enterprise. He enumerated other measures to propel the tourism sector. The authority has not relented in its advocacy role in the furtherance of the sector's interest. For example, the authority is liaising with Ghana Investment Promotion Center to reintroduce the duty exemptions on inputs for tourism investments. Representations are also being made to the Electricity Corporation of Ghana for a special bank for hotels computation of tariffs and the discussion is ongoing. We are also leading a renewed domestic domestic tourism drive under the Sea Ghana, Eat Ghana, Wear Ghana, and feel Ghana initiative. Ashanti Weege's most popular radio station, Isra 104.5, has for the fourth time been a giant the most tourism oriented radio station. Late afternoon show of your council host, King Slodania Mwako, also known as Asanka Boyoyo, merged best tourism promoter. There are man 32 individuals and corporate tourism operators on it at the Ashanti Weege Tourism Awards in Kumasi. Oh, they rolled me in such a way, so I'm very grateful. And also to the, the, to, more, to the multimedia company too. Other winners include Chief Executive of Astolins International, Richard Obiensumi. He entreated the government to invest in transportation and housing to boost tourism. In the tourism industry, we've got some challenges. And some of the challenges include um, access to facilities to embark on effective and efficient tourism. In terms of transportation, it's very difficult. So my best advice is that stakeholders, the government, should really invest in, in, in the tourism industry, especially in the area of transportation. Most often we do have students and youth, a lot of people, churches and organizations who want to visit most of the tourist attractions in Ghana. 
but for private businesses to arrange with um, private transport owners is difficult and the, the, the price they raise most often deter us from sort of engaging. Most often you raise money from clients and you have to invest all the money in transportation. So if the government will be able to invest heavily, so far as transport is concerned, I think it's going to be very, very, very useful. Reporting for Joy News, Kwasi Deborah. You're watching Business Live. We are taking a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program. A quick update on one of our top stories tonight. Uh, downstream petroleum industry players are expecting a further drop in fuel prices as the first price window for the month of March opens. Good news. Well, the previous window saw a marginal drop in pricing as government reduced the special petroleum tax from 17 to 15 percent. The action drew some further controversy as consumers called for a total scrap of the tax. We're speaking on the marketplace earlier. The executive secretary of the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, Duncan Amwa, said given a reduction in the tax rate coupled with other favorable factors, prices of petroleum products will go down. Uh, indeed. From what we have observed on the international market, uh, Ghanaian consumers are likely to get between 2 and 3 percent uh, reduction further uh, in the month of March. Uh, prices for both Argo and uh, Petro or PMS uh, have seen some marginal decline uh, over the past few weeks. And so, like we've indicated, uh, it is likely that by 1st, 2nd of March, uh, prices at the forecourt or the pumps are likely to go down further uh, by some 2% uh, within the next few days. All right, so can we conclude that the, re the reduction in the SPT is having a significant impact on pricing? And if not, what are the reasons, are the other reasons leading to this particular drop? Uh, indeed, if you take a look at the world uh, oil pricing situation, uh, the American Shield technology uh, is still a dwarfing factor for prices going up. And uh, whereas the world uh, market prices continue to go by around 65 for a barrel, uh, what you would have is that uh, most of the finished products uh, that we have today are seeing some drop or decline in prices. As to how sustainable this would be uh, post the first window of March, uh, that is yet to be seen. It might go up second window March, but for the first window, uh, it is rather likely that prices will go down because of some decline we have seen. Again, uh, the SPT has also been fixed at 46 percent now for both petrol uh, and diesel. So what it means is that uh, a decline or an increase or in the world market price uh, may not directly affect the SPT, although uh, we still continue to dialogue with government for further reduction in the SPT because we believe that uh, it could go down further to give much more relief to consumers uh, than it did uh, when they went to Parliament. And that certainly wraps up our show tonight. Thanks for watching. My name is Daryl Kwa. We are back same time tomorrow.